from one school to 12 schools from there are questions and concerns raised about the pressure of the uh, increased intake on the infrastructure 100 students to so 10000 students from 10 faculty members to 1000 faculty members there are faculty members that produce over 500 scopus publications we spend substantial resources to provide scholarships fellowships and studentships a lot of people uh, mistakenly might assume that this institution attracts only relatively well-off students. Is there enough legroom in the campus to flex beyond bounds? Absolutely, but... Hello and welcome to Shiksha.com. I am Deepak Singh with you. Today we are in OP Jindal Global University and interviewing the Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Dr. C. Rajkumar. Professor, welcome to Shiksha.com. Hello, how are you doing? Very we good doing to meet you. Sir. sir, my first question to is recent QS World Global Rankings what made those results? The university's vision from the very beginning was to fill a very important gap in the Indian higher education landscape, which is to be able to have a high quality education with a strong focus on faculty, research, knowledge creation and publications and internationalization. All these 13 years, as we expanded the university from one school to 12 schools, from 100 students to 10,000 students, from 10 faculty members to 1,000 faculty members, the vision and our imagination has been identical and been the same, A, to be able to invest in resources in the form of faculty who forms the core of any good institution. We have brought in the best minds from across India and around the world. These 1,000 faculty members full-time are from 46 countries in the world. That's the first. The second thing, uh, that was important for us is to be able to create an imagination for research and knowledge creation. And we have established 55 research centers and three research and capacity building institutes that are driving the research agenda. The third, which is equally connected to the second, is the faculty student ratio. Now, the challenge that most Indian universities face is that they don't have enough resources, both public and private. And hence, the faculty student ratio is not good enough for the students to have time from the faculty and the faculty to have time for research. We maintain a one is to nine faculty student ratio, which has not only the best in India, but among the best in the world. The fourth aspect of our university is our strong commitment to what we call innovative pedagogy that focuses on interdisciplinarity. And the fifth thing that we have committed ourselves is internationalization. We have built substantive international collaborations with over 350 countries universities spread across 67 countries in the world in which we have built partnerships and today uh, 13 years and for the last three years consecutively we have been ranked by the QS World University Rankings as India's first ranked private university and our law school being ranked as India's number one law school both in public and private. You were speaking about the research initiatives taken by the university. A lot of uh, around 55 research uh, centers have been opened here in the university. What has been the output of it? How many research papers or yes, patents yes. by faculty and by the students? Please uh, yeah. speak the down. We are a non-STEM, non-medicine university, so we don't have patents in that sense. But we do a lot of research in the form of publications. In the last two years, just during COVID years, I'm happy to report that our faculty members have produced over 500 Scopus publications. It's quite a rare feat that a purely liberal arts, humanities and social sciences university, which doesn't have STEM disciplines, is able to make such a substantial contribution to research. The young Indian population, around 10,000 of those are in the campus yes. here in Ophi yes. University. So what do you think uh, were the best initiatives that were taken by the university, which led to uh, about 10,000 of the population, the young population being here in this university. And what were the worst initiative you, 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 when you realized afterwards? Yeah. Uh, what do you say? We decided early on that we will have a transparent admissions process with no management quota or any other form of admissions that will undermine the process of having merit as the sole criterion for admitting students. The second reason I think is that we were building a university solely dedicated to humanities and social sciences. The larger imagination of India, as you know very well, is about engineering colleges and to some extent medical institutions and also STEM disciplines. We came at a time when these things were so common. And the next thing I believe uh, we were building 
a global university, but conscious of attracting the best minds across India. And that was part of our outreach effort as well. We traveled across the country. And today, I'm happy to report that almost 50% of our students come from South India and uh, even Northeast parts of India. We also have students from 20 different countries in the world. We spend substantial resources to provide scholarships, fellowships, and studentships to students so that those who cannot afford uh, education should not be deprived of the opportunity to pursue education here. This has enabled a lot of first generation learners, people from you know, lower middle class and others who may not be able to afford education to be able to take that leap forward and be part of our institution. I would say one of the best decisions we have ever taken is, uh, I'll say this, uh, to be with our proximity to Delhi has opened up enormous op opportunities for our students and our faculty and to bring the people from uh, Delhi and other places to come in. As far as the uh, bad decisions are concerned, one of the fearful things that happened for all of us, not just uh, us, but the whole world of education was COVID-19. And um, uh, I can share with you that when the entire world of education was adversely impacted, we grew significantly. In March 2020, we had a little over 5,000 students. At the end of COVID, we had 10,000 students. At, in March 2020, we had nearly 600 full-time faculty members. We now have uh, over 1,000 full-time faculty members. We end up, we had 19 lakh square feet of built-up space, and now we have 29 lakh of square feet of built-up space. So basically, well, rather, essentially, our overall uh, footprint has dramatically increased during the COVID years, and we worked hard to achieve it. But one of the things that we are particularly proud is the fact that we've been able to create a very progressive gender situation within campus. 55% of our full-time faculty members are women, over 30% of our administrative staff are women, and over 50% of our students are women, which is quite rare as far as faculty is concerned anywhere in the world. Is there a conscious effort on the part of university? It is a very conscious effort, not necessarily to have quotas, but to be able to reach out to the widest possible sections of society so that the brightest and qualified women could be hired as faculty. You uh, pointed out uh, one of the myths uh, that uh, I hear about over Jindal University that it is because of collaborative programs with international universities, summer programs and international faculties come into the university. When you go inside the campus, you get a global feel of a, you know international college or university. It is not affordable. We sp already spoke about Correct. it. Correct. Uh, do you feel, are there any other myths or misconceptions about this university which you would like to burst? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you so much. Well, honestly speaking, but as a private university, we don't receive any governmental grants. We are entirely self-funded. But despite that, we've been able to keep our tuition fee relatively less compared to many other institutions which are entirely self-financed and private funded is because of our philanthropist who not only believes in philanthropy, but also ensures access, which is Mr. Jindal. Despite that, I have always maintained that we do face a very important challenge, which is a good number of students may not be able to afford education still. The answer to this problem all over the world has been solved by only one method, which is to increase and invest in scholarships to provide greater access. My hope is, as Mr. Jindal continuously supported this endeavor in the years to come, the alumni of the university will indeed institute scholarships and fellowships as they have benefited from the kind of education that they have received. Our alumni are still, our first batch was only 2012 and we are 10 years into the alumni framework. I believe the next decade when our alumni will be holding uh, higher positions of power and responsibility, they will make a contribution which will inevitably democratize and provide greater access to education. The second aspect which I think is important is a lot of people uh, mistakenly might assume that this institution is um, uh, 
attracts only relatively well-off students and not necessarily have the diversity. It's a completely mistaken and inaccurate description. The university has a phenomenal diversity for all the reasons I just mentioned. Our scholarship policy is based on merit come means, which means a large number of students who are studying on scholarship, we have spent over 225 crores in the last decade or so, towards scholarship and fellowship and fee concessions and they are people who may not be able to afford education and that diversity and pluralism is deeply embedded in the institutional culture. I think this is uh, and, and as students who come in they will know it but when you are um, you know seeing from outside yeah. you might have an impression like that. What percentage <clears throat> of a tuition fee uh, can be the highest scholarship here? Oh, we provide up to 100%. So, in fact, this year, I will be sharing with you that we have instituted 10 100% scholarships uh, for uh, our Masters in Public Health. Around 10,000 students are here. There are questions and concerns raised about the pressure of the uh, increased intake on the infrastructure available sure. in the campus. Great question. Please address that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for that. So, it's, it's another very important commitment that we made that our expansion in student numbers should be exceeded by our expansion in faculty. So quite remarkably, our faculty student ratio over the years, there were times when it was 1 is to 15, it became 1 is to 14 and 1 is to 13 and 1 is to 12, 1 is to 11 and 10 and now 1 is to 9. As we grew, and this is an amazing story, that most universities when they expand students, the immediate adverse implication is they don't have enough faculty. But as we expanded and become big, we recruited even larger number of faculty to ensure that the quality doesn't suffer. The ratio currently you were saying is 1 is to 9. 9. Correct. What was the ratio when you started? 1 is to 15. Okay. And that's again quite rare because universities are so much dependent upon increasing student numbers. As far as physical infrastructure is concerned, it's an enormous uh, effort has been made. We have now excess classrooms than what we need. But more importantly, we have created so many empty spaces and sports spaces and other spaces for our students. I don't need to tell you that proof of the pudding is the eating. You are already on the campus, so I invite you to take a look. Uh, it's an absolute state-of-the-art campus with so much of facilities for students. In addition, we are creating an expanded food court. Uh, in fact, our Chancellor, Mr. Jindal, during the pandemic had made a substantial commitment to the tune of another 1,000 crores towards further expanding the physical infrastructure. There are five major projects that are being initiated as we speak. One, we are building a state-of-the-art faculty office block, which is coming up right there. Then we have a a comprehensive sports complex which includes all sports and games indoor. Then we have, of course, as we speak, we are building a comprehensive multi-story uh, dining hall space which will declutter some of our academic block spaces and give it to students. We also have a full-fledged plan to build a comprehensive uh, moot court uh, and other, um, you know, convention center area for the students. And uh, while all of this is happening, we intend to build another uh, student housing block as well. So there is enormous investment in infrastructure happening at a excessive speed. Is there enough legroom in the campus to flex beyond boundaries? Absolutely. But what we have made a commitment is that the existing green cover that we have protected will not change and we will not reduce. So all the green spaces that you are seeing from the flag area to the cricket ground, to the football ground, to the hockey ground, to the tennis courts and other green areas spread across the campus will be fully protected and whatever expansion that we intend to do will remain part of that periphery. What kind of an outcome of their degree course or the graduation of postgrad? We don't do blanket promises for jobs. I think it's uh, vulgar and even unethical for universities to promise jobs. What do we promise? First, we promise a good quality education. Second, we promise high quality faculty who can inspire students. Third, we promise an intellectually vibrant ecosystem that the best of the students, best in the students can be brought to bear. Four, 
we promise that this messaging will be taken to all kinds of professional networks, companies, corporations, non-governmental organizations, think tanks, research institutions, judges, lawyers, law firms, the whole entire sector of potential employers about what we do. Fifth, we bring them to campus and they are given opportunities to interview our students. Ultimately, the decision to recruit them or not will depend upon the individual employer, but we have created an ecosystem that will enable such a possibility for our students. Around uh, 12 schools on yes, the campus. Yes, correct. And uh, one of the um, most, uh, you know, the oldest school here is the law school. Uh, how did it become as, to be regarded as one of the best private law schools in India? The story of Jindal Global Law School is one of attracting the finest minds, creating a vision and imagination, creating opportunities for people to pursue research, building collaborations with universities around the world and to engage with potential employers as well as uh, law firms and other such organizations about the university. If you do this consistently without compromising, you are bound to get results. Are there any new things which you are planning for specifically for the law school in the coming academic year? We have just launched a few undergraduate programs, one in uh, BA in Criminology and Criminal Justice, which is one of our popular programs. We, of course, have a BA in Legal Studies program. Is the law school getting a preferential treatment, you being a law graduate? That's a great question. Um, in the early two years, I would say, a lot of my energy and time was spent on the growth and development of the law school. But I'm happy to report that we have a fantastic team led by an executive dean of the law school, which is uh, Professor Srijit, and around 80 other assistant deans, associate deans, and vice deans who form the governance apparatus of the law school. They do a phenomenal job, and I don't need to do much about it. I actually spend a lot of time on our newer schools, such as uh, the Public Health School, the Language and Literature School, the Environment and Sustainability School, the Public Policy School, uh, the Liberal Arts School, the Journalism School, the Architecture School, and of course, the Business School and the Banking and Finance School and, and Public Policy. So, given the vision of an interdisciplinary university, I feel very strongly that we need to ensure all our schools are raising and pushing um, above they, you know, wait to raise the quality and promote excellence. A bit about the library, because, you know, 55 research uh, research initiatives and research centers here in this university. What role library plays? Here? Well, the library is a fantastic space. I invite you to visit the library. Uh, again, a lot of innovation. Uh, two years ago, I must confess that our emphasis was a lot on hard copy and physical books and library spaces. All of that is retained but we went on a digital revolution. Today, the library is almost unrecognizable since even a few years ago because we realized that COVID-19 gave us an opportunity and the library electronic database accessible to all our students and faculty and staff is phenomenal. And so library is a great space. And I do believe that uh, we need to focus, slowly move towards, um, you know, digitization in other sectors without completely eliminating the physical aspect of the library. So, CUET has been uh, introduced in the education system of India, where admission ha are happening in central universities on the basis of CUET score. How do you see the impact of it and do we see it coming to OP Jindal as well? We have already opened up our institutional mechanisms to accept CUET scores for students to be admitted at Jindal and I invite students across all the schools, excepting the law school, which conducts a different, uh, which which doesn't conduct, but which accepts a different set of examination scores, such as the LSAT for admission. So CUT is welcome, and I sincerely hope that those who take the CUT apply to Jindal. But I will say this: that um, it's it's too early in the day to make an evaluative judgment about CUT. But if we were to identify the the biggest challenges it has not yet got integrated into the national consciousness as well as the systems that are prevailing in our education institutions. I believe very soon it will become. 
How much credence is OP Jindal giving to CUET scores? We'll accept CUET scores as if they have taken any other entrance examination that we already accept. So for us, CUET is not any different from any other entrance examination for admission. So one can give uh, either of the exams and take it? Absolutely. You hit it on the nail. Okay. That is true. 12 uh, schools, 55 research centers, 10,000 students, faculty ratio of 1 is to 9. And 1,000 faculty members, yeah. And 1,000 faculty members. Where will the OP Jindal stop? It's a great question. Um, two things. One is that we recognize that the campus expansion uh, is going to be limited by uh, the infrastructure that I talked about earlier. Uh, we don't have plans to go beyond, say, 13 to 14,000 students in this campus. And we don't have plans to build multiple campuses. So that's, I mean, I, I can see if we have, there are some, we are in the process of looking at how we can expand physical spaces on campus, but I don't see that expansion to move beyond 15,000 students. The next big expansion, if we were to look at it in the future, which we've already started, is expansion through the online and blended programs. Okay. With UpGrad, we have, I don't know, um, I mean, over a, 50, over a thousand students studying different forms of programs under the UpGrad framework. We also have a smaller number through the Coursera framework led out of Washington, D.C. I think we high quality online programs with strong emphasis on blended learning will be a part of the future where we will pay attention to. But in any case, uh, the core values of university will be about quality, excellence and inclusivity. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your time, valuable time. Uh, it was a wonderful conversation with you. We got a lot of insights about this university, the future programs, the kind of work going on, uh, going on here in terms of research, the kind of facilities we witnessed ourselves. So in case you're considering OP Jindal University, please, uh, you know, take a relook at the video, relook at the interview of uh, Vice Chancellor, sir. And uh, if you have further questions, do put your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you so much.